Hello and welcome to the second part on object unit. In this part, we look at what object unit is, how to use it, and run our first test case. Object unit is a library that wraps JUnit and the Siebel Java data bean. Test cases are written as part of a Java class. You need to know only basic Java to write test cases. So let's start looking at our object unit webcast class which will contain all our test cases. But before we get to test cases, we need to create two very important functions. One is the setup function, and the next is the teardown function. In the setup function, we set up all the connections and any variables or parameters that we will need during testing. So let's look at the setup function first. We create an object unit connections class. From it, we get an instance of the Siebel Java data bean. After that, what follows is an array that contains a list of all the different SR types that we will need during testing, followed by an array containing a list of all the different SR statuses. The teardown class make sure that you disconnect from the Siebel Java data bean. Moving on, let's look at the information that's needed to connect to Siebel. This is stored in an XML file called object unit enterprise beacon object unit config.xml and this particular parameter called the Siebel JDB URL points to the Siebel server that we need to connect followed by the username and the password needed to connect to the Java data bean. So now let's go ahead and create our first test case. Before we do that, let's create a test suffix variable and I'll explain what that is in a minute. to object uni unit one two three this is a string we will use to suffix any records we insert so we know that they got created as part of which run so every time we rerun the test we can change this suffix so we can keep track of the records that get created. Now let's go ahead and look at the test case. The test case is right here. It's called service request inserts. As the name suggests, it's going to be a test case that will insert records in SIBO. So we create a property set that we're going to pass to the SIBO object unit library. This property set is exactly to, similar to the property set that the Siebel developers are used to creating in eScript. So we create two properties. One property specifies the PO name and the PC name. And then we have a for loop that's going to loop through the list of all the different SR types array. And we will insert each SR type. We will set the status to open and abstract which is the SR comments we will store the test suffix so we know again which test run they came which test run resulted into which records and then we add this property set and then we pass it on to the Siebel object unit library and we call the BC insert method on the Siebel object unit library we pass it the Java data bean the property set that contains what we want it to do and if there are any exceptions encountered we shall fail this test so this class the Siebel BC test is part of the object unit library it's one among other classes uh, the other classes are used for testing business services workflows web services product configurator and other invocable methods in Siebel. So let's get our suffix and go to our Siebel server and make sure there are no pre-existing service requests created with that suffix. So going to the Siebel server, service request screen, service request list, changing it to all service request. And let's query for 
the abstract field which is shown as summary and make sure there's no service request with that value so there are none so now when we run the test case we can come back and validate that the service requests have been created so coming back to our test for inserting service request we see there's a for loop this for loop is going to run through and create all the different SR types listed in the array which is 10 the ones we see here so we ex after we run the test we expect to see these 10 SR types with the status of open and the summary field set to the test suffix which should contain the value listed here so let's go ahead and run this test we do this by right clicking the class that has all the test cases and then go run as JUnit test so this instantiates our class and starts executing our test cases and we see the execution and in, in the console and here in this JUnit window if there is any exceptions the test will be marked as failed and if it's if there if it's successful it will be marked as successful with a green color so as we can see the test has completed without any errors so let's go ahead and look for the service requests in the SQL server so now I query again for the same value of the suffix and we see that we have a total of 10 service requests created we have all the different ones that we had in the array all their statuses are open as shown here so the test ran successfully so you can see you can quickly run many tests just with a few lines of code now the developer would never go and create so many different types of service requests let alone doing the additional testing that we're going to follow in the other parts Thank you for watching this part and please continue watching.